I get the fun. <laughs> there you go. All mm -hmm. right. Well, welcome everybody to the WMGSO Twit Stream. I'm your host, Sham Watermelon Farm. Today we are streaming Bioshock with our very special guest, Chris, who has joined us to talk about sound design in horror games. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, we're glad to have you back. So we're going to start at the very beginning of Bioshock. I've got the sound up <laughs> turned up pretty high. We're going to be talking um, a little less about straight up music of Bioshock and more about the interplay of sound design and how the soundscape is built in Bioshock and the cues that it gives you for things like picking up items, for things like scary things happening now, you guys. So Chris is going to talk about that as we go on. And let's get started. OK. So uh, just as a uh, brief introduction to my relationship with this game, I actually wrote my master's thesis on <laughs> not this game, but on uh, Dead Space. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Dead Space uh, draws very, very heavily in terms of its design cues mm -hmm. from this video game. Uh, in, in fact, when Bioshock had a pretty profound impact uh, on the industry yeah. after it came out, and it just seemed like Every AAA game after that had to be like, you know, you're picking up audio diaries yes. and you're walking through a ruined landscape. And like the landscape is giving you hints about what happened, maybe. Mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. There's an unreliable narrator giving you something, an idea of what's going on, but not quite. So. Yeah, now, of course, uh, Bioshock is in the, seri the Shock series, and its predecessors, System Shock 2 and System Shock 1, are both uh, very similar in terms mm -hmm. of the way they approach... Um, uh, environment design and sound design, but this was the one that sold a lot of copies, right? So, uh, <laughs> and there's one thing the game industry is very good at doing, it's copying games that sell a lot of copies. Absolutely. Um, so here we go, we'll give it a start. Uh, I'm going to play on easy, just because I don't care much about... Fan. Um, <laughs> actually, having a challenge here, it's more about show and tell. Why do children take so long to grow? Oh my gosh. Eternal I questions. Couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, one of the rare in this game um, uh, cutscenes mm -hmm. uh, that don't happen diegetically in game. There's one I want to say like three quarters of the way through, mm -hmm. and then an ending cutscene. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it is. Uh, yeah. All through the audio tapes, all through, as opposed to stopping the action and showing you a short movie, it's just through. Yeah. I mean, they the they, they do force you to put your weapons down, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this game uh, doesn't rely uh, heavily on uh, taking away your control, though they they still do do it, right? You know, it's just a. Uh, it, it gives you, makes you feel like you have more agency. And of course, the, the story of this game plays with the idea of video game agency in a uh, fairly obvious, but at the time, remarkable way. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, someone lost their bag. So I didn't know your, your name for this stream is, what, Shamrock Wow Pants or something? <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, my original Twitch handle is Sham Watermelon Farm, I and I just have that around as my personal account. And then this is the WMGSO. There, oh man! So this is um, actually the remastered version of Bioshock. The original, well, still looking, you know, stylized and neat. They up the ante on their water and fire effects, so the scene is a lot nicer looking. <laughs> yeah. This is also basically a cutscene. So this is how Bioshock does cutscenes, right? It's basically a cutscene in the sense that, um, you know, there's a very limited set of choices for you to make, and you are limited in terms of your agency, but it's not in the sense that you can move. Uh, of course, this strategy in first-person shooters uh, probably introduced most heavily in Half-Life 2, um, in which you could comically hop around like an idiot uh, when you're... Uh, when you're Gordon Freeman and someone's talking to you. And someone's giving you some very serious yeah, instructions. Yeah, and, and you are crouching <laughs> on the table repeatedly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is let's, let's talk about this. And this isn't related to sound design, but it is tied to it. Um, Bioshock loves these moments. Um, the way it constructs its environmental form of storytelling. Uh, it loves to uh, turn on key lights as you walk into an area and lets you see some architectural feature which is supposed to draw your attention and make you think about um, 
who who would have constructed this place. Of course, now we get this this uh, cute uh, libertarian uh, slogan <laughs> from <giant> uh, <laughs> Raptor's founder. Uh, but as we as we go through the game, we'll we'll see that exact sort of storytelling structure probably five or six times. Here, see it again. Yeah. Um, so the, the the light functions to draw our attention to where we need to look, right? It's a standard cinematic technique, and it works just as well in a first-person shooter as it does in the cinema. Mm. Does it work as well in a third-person game, yeah. or just because... Um, it's a little harder in a third-person game because I, our vision can be really heavily controlled here. Yes. Like, I'm not going to look... I mean, I could look here. Right. But you'd miss... Uh, I could look at this nice egg, oh. egg light in the ceiling, right? But uh, <laughs> due to the... The way that the key lighting works, we're, we're, our attention is heavily drawn to this. Mm -hmm. Another cutscene, basically. It's it's a way of delivering exposition. That like you're still kind of sitting here and being told something. Oh yeah, but I mean, it's all implied. It's all just it's up to you to think what is happening here. Well, and this is this is this is as this is the heavy-handed part of, of mm -hmm. Bioshock. The rest of it is less heavy-handed. Um, and uh, other you know many other games try to do this too. Uh, Dark Souls is another great example, mm -hmm. which does its storytelling almost entirely by architecture. Mm -hmm. So, give something to mention, right? We're gonna, we're gonna hear background music here. Mm -hmm. Probably for one of really the only times during this run we'll hear it featured. Right. And it has these uh, orchestrational features that characterize this soundtrack. Uh, High-pitched violins. Um, have the use of Discord, um, and it, these are, you know, if you're at all familiar, of course, with the standard horror tropes, you should tick all those boxes. And it's interesting that you say the one place where the music is featured, because often it is in the background, mm -hmm. but all that you can really hear is that extremely high-pitched violin, <laughs> because there's so much going on with sound, like maybe there's yeah. you know, a fight going on, maybe there's you know, an audio tape playing. And so the part that is still, it's just the piercingness of it, has to cut through all of this other, not, not noise, so to speak. But I mean, it is, it is noise, <laughs> but, you know, uh, fights in this game are extremely loud. Mm -hmm. um, the, the splicers, you know, speak dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, there's gunfire. Uh, there's sound indicators of, you know, security mm -hmm. cameras seeing you or security um, yes. spot, spotting you. Uh, there's just really heavy so, footsteps and swings of weapons, and it's, you know ways in which the music can make itself stand out it's sort of it's fitting for this genre that it's using these really high-pitched strings because it is a horror game so it's not like it's completely out of place yeah uh, most and most our games feature uh that uh, dead space for example mm -hmm. uh also relies extremely heavily on high-pitched noises uh because they are really easily audible over anything mm -hmm. like over roaring or monsters and here it's just really up until quite a bit, I would say like five minutes or so later is when music comes back. Because right now it's just sound, it's just these whispering voices, these, you know, shrieky, weird things trying to attack you. So there's this distinct <coughs> absence of music in much of this game as well. Or still in our glorified cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> we can look around, that's about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you want me to turn subtitles on? Oh, yeah. Really well, sorry, we might as well uh, do that. Yes, that really quick. Um, yeah. Let's see, let's see. I think it's uh, audio. We under audio? Air. Sometimes it's under graphics, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, your gameplay, how about that? Hey! Uh, there you go. I'll turn on dialogue. Okay. Let's just do that. Nice. There we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Hmm? Well, they didn't appear? No, no. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, no, see, it, it, just, it loaded the asset, so. Got it, got it. Okay. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do, uh, in case everyone is not familiar with uh, their Film Theory 101, and if they've, for they've forgotten what they learned in that class, we just never took it. Um, we're going to, one animating distinction that's going to go on here is the diegetic, non diegetic split. Um, this is sort of a standard way of underhanding how sound works in almost all media. Uh, and the, the basic explanation is that diegetic sound some as a uh, source from the game, from inside the world of the game or the film or the mm. television show. Um, and non-diegetic sound has, has, no, um, has no source. It comes from somewhere outside. Uh, so nominally right, no, uh, diegetic sound auditors inside the uh, media text uh, would be able to hear it and react to it. Whereas non-diegetic sound is Mm, it's mostly just for us as viewers. It cues us in. It has some functions. Um, one thing we'll see as we hear some of the sounds that are in this game, it's sort of unclear which side they're on. Mm -hmm. um, and indeed, the distinction is more of a, a Venn diagram rather than a hard and fast boundary. Sure. But it's a good way of, of, of sort of conceptualizing where sounds come in. Um, coming in here, we heard, you know, one of the most the most common example of. Um, non diegetic sound, which is just background music. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so most video games, um, especially the, the, the stuff that you guys, your repertoire consists of, has a ton of background music all the time. Mm -hmm. um, JRPGs, of course, have uh, often will have you know hundreds of tracks, a hundred tracks in the game, each of which uh, just to mark a location. Um, but Bioshock and many games like it. Um, really back down on the uh, on the on the diegetic or the non diegetic music, uh, preferring instead to let their sound design and their environment mm -hmm. carry 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 the work. Um, so, when we're going through this first area, what I'm going to try and do is uh, we're going to think about if we were going to divide up the sounds that are being made here into a sort of a taxonomy, uh, put them into boxes uh, that made us sort of uh, better able to think about what their function is in, inside of this of this text, um, then um, that'll help us get a handle on what the sound designers might have been trying to do when they designed the sounds in a specific way. So the first sound I want to focus on because this is relatively quiet is. Can we hear it? The splicer. I was hoping to hear the sound of my feet. Okay. <laughs> Um, but the first set of sounds is that I want to focus on is the sounds of your character that your character makes. So let's see. They'll shut up for a second. Oh, yep, there we go. Bonk. Right. So I think we hear us grunting every now and again too. You can hear the wood creaking yes. just a tiny bit as well. Right. So, okay. So there's a couple things I want to notice there. Right? Mm. Now it's... And now we're on the tile. Yes. We're on the luggage. Now we're so on... we're noticing something here, and that is the, the, the player sound is adaptive. Mm -hmm. And when I say adaptive, I mean that uh, it changes based on your surroundings and your environment. So we can imagine there's some kind of uh, what you would call a state machine, and uh, it it has a sound of of your landing, and it modifies that based on your state. Mm -hmm. Here's you jumping on the wood. Here's up in the metal mm -hmm. or stone. Oh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I, I have no idea what this is. This all this gray stuff on the floor here. <laughs> um, and, and this is relevant because it actually conveys uh, gameplay information. Uh, it can play gameplay information and narrative information. It tells us something about the construction of the world around us. It tells us something about where we're walking and how we're jumping. Um, okay, so player sounds. Okay, that was the second sound I want to think about there. So what happened there is I went up and I interacted with the object. When I interacted with the object, I got an immediate oral response. Um, 
that was presumably supposed to represent picking the, the, wrench, the wrench, wrench off the ground, right? Mm -hmm. So this means that uh, just like the, uh, us as the player, we're keyed to events. Objects are keyed to oral events too. So we have player sounds and we have um, what we'll call, we'll call object sounds. And something else happened there, right? Objects can interact with the environment mm. and in doing so produce another set of sounds. Right? So this is continually we're adding to the to the set of sounds we have here. We key an event, we heard a stinger, mm -hmm. right? A brief moment of non diegetic music to indicate the beginning of a scene. I'm hearing some more stingers Again, it's our here. Strings. Right. Right. And more interacting with the environment. Exactly, and more environment with the environment. <laughs> and so it's useful, I think, to separate um, um, objects and non-player characters because non-player characters have have one function that objects typically don't, and that is speech. Mm -hmm. So uh, they spicers in this game speak incessantly, <laughs> um, and they're constantly shouting threats. And in the context of the way space works in this game, you know, why do you think they... Tracy, why do you think they do that? Well, I think they talk so they can let you know where they are. Exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, if they were trying to sneak up on you, they probably shouldn't be talking. Um, some but, of them do. Yeah, some, yeah. Of, them, some of them do do that. Um, but right here, they talk so much because it's, it, it allows us to make sense of the environment of the game. Um, it... Because our field of view is actually super limited, mm -hmm. we can't actually see a whole lot. Sure. Hearing, being able to hear architecturally, to hear the ways uh, the sounds operate in space, is one of the key ways that we learn to navigate. Um, and of course, in well, I mean, in this game, it's um, it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, in a in a, another first-person shooter game. It's perhaps more critical, more competitive one, like mm -hmm. uh, um, CSGO, for example. Sure, sure. So, here I'm going to eat this bar. What is this? A little slight munching sounds. Yes. So, uh, and here, I'm, well, can I interact with this one? No. That's annoying. So, these, these little sounds that are being done here, um, they, some of them represent pretty clearly what maybe what it would sound like if you ate some, some chips. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a crunching sound. But um, money um, making, uh, you know, a cha-ching sound. <laughs> uh, you know, dollar bills don't usually make a cha-ching sound, when right? You up, yeah. um, and bullets, right, they make a gun sound, right? Mm -hmm. They don't actually make that sound. Um, so here's a question for you, Tracy. Um, when you pick up a, a, a gun and you hear the sound of maybe something being cocked or something mm -hmm. being... Um, moved and shaken, is that diegetic or is that non-diegetic? That's probably diegetic for the character because he's, you know, the implication that the character has put something into the gun. Right, so, uh, but here, here's a question. Do you think when you pick up a gun in real life, it oh. uh, starts making these uh, chinking noises? <laughs> no. No, it doesn't actually. So this is one of the ways that um, sound in this game, even though you're, you're right, like, oh, maybe guns in this game are super noisy. And every time you pick them up, they're like, like ammo rattles around inside it's them. It's crazy, no. <laughs> Right. Um, um, but actually, the, the, the reason why that's there is to provide a, an auditory signal of... Um, um, of the kind of object that you picked up. Right, exactly. Sorry, no, I pressed one of these macro buttons. I wasn't, <laughs> no. I wasn't sure if I, if I screwed something up. So here we got our second cutscene. Um, so when I'm when I'm talking about the uh, the way that these you know object sounds, NPC sounds, and player sounds, um, the reason why we're separating those out is because each of those um, have a specific way that they can interact with the environment, mm -hmm. um, and the way that those interact with the environment is how we, the player, um, uh, experience this game architecturally. Um, and so <coughs> for us as the player, <coughs> um, um, our movement and, and breathing uh, can tell us things about the state of our character, uh, can tell us things about the state of our, uh, the, of our surroundings. Mm -hmm. um, and in the, the NPC um, audio functions essentially the same way, right? Um, 
a non non visual indicator of some state of the game. These guys are a great example. Yes. Right. Um, you feel and hear the footsteps of a big daddy be often before you will see it. Mm -hmm. um, you hear the whole. Yeah, you hear their their well very sound. distinctive <laughs> noises, right? Mm -hmm. um, little sisters are a little harder here, in my in my opinion. Um, but you know, um, and and objects uh, function quite differently. So not quite differently, but um, so for example, this trash can um, doesn't make a, a lot of noise. So uh, it doesn't it doesn't shout to me to pick it up. <laughs> Some games do do that, right? They sure, sure. yeah, like a power up falls and it makes a loud noise. Mm -hmm. or like a ding ding. Yeah, or, right, or exactly. Um, but when I, of course when I interact with these and I take the chips out of the trash and eat them, we get a series of sounds which don't really seem they don't, they're not really modified more chips. Mm, yummy. Can I pick this up? No. If you had the uh, the yeah, other talk, power, tell, yeah, tell, <laughs> tell me this, yeah, okay. Oh, well. a little later. Uh, woo. <coughs> and then this adds another set of sounds here. So okay. now we're in environmental sounds. I can't actually die here, right? No, I can't. No, you can't. So environmental sounds um, indicate the properties of of a a specific place architecturally. So here we've keyed a, a triggered event, right? This uh, the wreckage of presumably our plane uh, crashing into this uh, covered walkway. But we also, what else are we hearing here primarily? Water, rushing water, right? So that's that uh, not only indicates to us, you know, logically, okay, uh, maybe I shouldn't uh, hang around here. Um, <laughs> Seems pretty dangerous to have a, a, a broken passage under the, the sea, um, but also marks this uh, this location. Um, and later on, uh, when we get to areas where you have a lot more free mo movement, um, the game will use environmental sounds to cue us into uh, being able to tell very quickly where where we are. Um, so and that environment was, you are in the covered walkway, there's water all around you. Right. And, and, Don't stick around, it's dangerous. Right. And uh, as, as we move to places that have not, not just a, and here's something that happens a lot, you get the music stinger as you get to a new area. Um, um, as you move into uh, a new space, often what will happen is... Uh, some musical cue or sound cue that is associated with that place will be foregrounded for you. Mm -hmm. And that marks something about this, this place's mechanical identity, often, mm -hmm. but also in terms of its affective identity. So what, what is this place supposed to be in the world of Rapture? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll go, I don't know if we'll get to, the, to you know, like the, the metro and so forth, but you know, we'll get to a restaurant, mm -hmm. we'll get to doctor's office, we'll get to, and later on you get to, uh, the uh, <coughs> the theater. Uh, and then also, you hear a little, little bit of that when you get to the um, gatherer's garden and to right. the place where you buy items. There's like the kind of like do 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 the little shop music. Right, precisely. Yeah, indeed. Uh, that's another one of those. Where's this boy? There's the boy. Get him. What? Yeah, like so that that's another one of those, was one of those sounds that doesn't doesn't super make a ton of sense mm -hmm. if we interpret it diegetically. Like I don't know why picking up those um, first aid sprays makes like a smacking sound, but it, it but it, it does. But um, it's, it's distinguishable. You don't, but it's yeah. super distinguishable. I can really easily hear it even if I'm in the middle of fighting. Um, and what that means is that when you know when the designers were thinking about this. Um, Oh, I'll drink some wine there. <laughs> um, some cat cat food. Okay. Cat, cat food. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, they they were they were thinking. Okay, well, we're not as concerned with with worrying about some form of mimesis. New term there. Mimesis is a uh, artistic strategy where you attempt to imitate uh, life or real life uh, reality. 
Um, what they're more concerned with is having it f function in the gameplay sense mm -hmm. um, and having a, a real and useful function. In that, um, and by the gameplay sense, meaning give you information about what's going on. Yeah, about, a, have, about a game state yeah. that you might want to have. So with all these splicers shouting, now we know that we're surrounded by enemies. And, oh, right. there's a guy on fire. <laughs> so... Yes, and the, the, the sound of the splicers um, in this game as opposed to others, and there are many games that have, um, where the, the sounds of the enemies are less loud, I think. Mm -hmm. But in this game, they're foregrounded for two reasons. Uh, first of all, effectively, right? They often shout insults and sort of gross stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna carve out your eyeballs or whatever. Um, but also, this game's dark. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times what'll happen is uh, you'll get a... Uh, a dude will just jump out at you and just give you the one, two, and you're right in your face. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the radio. This radio is, it's a kind of NPC sound, but actually it's its not its not like the splicers, right? Sure. So how is it not like the splicers, Tracy? Well, it sounds like it's coming through a transistor radio, like, a, like through a speaker. Right, it's modified. Uh, do, do you think, and, and because it's sort of placed in a player focused direction mm -hmm. you know we don't really hear it we don't hear it echoing sure oh uh, it's not like far away like mm -hmm. the splicers like its spatial location to us architecturally is not relevant the only thing that's relevant is getting instructions mm -hmm. so the radio is is a means by which um you know we are the the like instructions are taken into the diegesis right mm -hmm. It's, it's the games that are trying to provide a mechanical explanation for telling you where to go all the yes. time. Um, and they, they do that via this this sort of sound type. I'll just whack this guy. Gotcha. So there's our noisy revolver. Yep. Um, I think. Right. right. It, it, yeah, it makes a sound like all the good bolts inside are rattling around. <laughs> um, but uh, that's a sound that's super necessary. Um, it's necessary and it's very common to first-person shooters in general, right? Mm -hmm. um, in shooters like Doom and shooters like um, almost everyone I can think of. I would think like tracing back to Wolfenstein 3D almost. You, you, know? you yeah. walk over ammo and it makes like a uh, uh, yeah, exactly a noise that you associate with the gun. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, that's not in it really related to mimesis in any way, right? There's there's no attempt to to faithfully represent reality. Mm -hmm. um, it's more the acknowledgement that in order for you to navigate the space, you, right. you need to have these cues in order to easily and quickly identify the game state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a very Bioshock moment. Um, like I mentioned earlier, when you walk into uh, the uh, Andrew oh, Ryan room, yes. Uh, here you walk in, uh, and the lighting is designed to draw our attention to three things. Um, the first is this sign saying it's a masquerade ball. This other sign saying Happy New Year. And then finally, where we are, dancing downstairs. Or, or you know, the, the dance floor is downstairs, where you're supposed, supposed to go. go. So, and finally we get music again. Mm. Um, and this is... Uh, as compared to a non-diegetic music object, which there are plenty of in this game, this is a diegetic music object, which means that inside the text of the game it has a source. That means that you could look for it. So, and of course, affectively, it functions to tell us something about this world. Uh, maybe I'll go down. It tells us about the time. It, it tells us about the time. Culture. It tells us about what they're doing. It's also, I think, um, apart from the opening credits, the first time when you start to hear the way that the pre-existing jazz standards are used in this game as well. Yeah. And that's when it starts doing the, what this game is most known for musically is these very upbeat, jazzy, dancey tunes juxtaposed with a horrible fight or, you know, a horrific setting. This game's really easy in easy mode. <laughs> I'm just going to stand there still <laughs> yes. and not move when I am hit with a wrench. All right, so now we get to the first example of our classic Bioshock Bye. Audio Diaries.
I just love the idea that there are characters walking around with these gigantic audio recorders and like reels of tape and they're just sort of hanging out in public recording themselves talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, right. So that, that leads us into the audio diaries, right? Um, which is a big way that this game uh, delivers exposition. Yes. Um, two ways, primarily uh, the architecture, right? The, the world we explore, mm -hmm. uh, the, the radio. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then the these um, uh, these uh, these audio diaries, um, and uh, they, as you noticed, uh, they don't make a ton of sense, really. <laughs> um, but uh, there is you know, some more notes and noisy money there. Um, I think I went back there last time. This is creepy. <laughs> Right. So, you know, this is this is this is one of the ways the games do environmental storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you you walk in, there's some again some key lighting draws our attention to places. This light draws our immediate attention right to uh the pot in the pan. You mm -hmm. see this is a stove, this is a kitchen. And back here we can see that there was some fight over something, right? Mm -hmm. And this guy is slumped over. A cash register. Oh, no. Right? Oh, my gosh. Was he trying to steal it, or was he trying to protect it from someone? We'll never know. Yeah, we'll never know. But uh, the game allows us to come to our own conclusions about uh, the way this was. That, combined with the audio diary, um, should you know imply pretty clearly to us that, okay, on New Year's Eve, a big fight broke out, right? <laughs> really got him. Yeah, you nailed him. <laughs> Yeah. Gross. Gross. Turn this on. Flushing the toilets here. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a time honored tradition in most games. I probably should have rated this PG-13. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's, there's bad words in there. There's some bad words in this Hurovidji game. Oh. Here we have another way that Bioshock does cutscenes. Yeah. Hey, sweet niche, how you doing? So can you draw a weapon here? Nope. Or, oh, okay. Right, so this is... Uh, Even though he asked you to, technically. Uh, well, he told us, he said, would you yes. kindly put that weapon right. away? And of course, you know, as we know in this game, would you kindly is the, um, the secret is, message. The, is, the, is the code signature. Uh, which, right, that, so that's a way that diegetically mm -hmm. they explain losing control in cutscenes. Mm -hmm. So okay. every cutscene, well, until the ones after you, that part, okay. but they, they explain, um, explain away the fact that you lose your agency by providing an in-game explanation mm -hmm. for this very game-like feature. Exactly. Which is, oh, you have to watch the movie now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, as to how far that weight carries is this sort of a matter of, of, of opinion, but uh, that clearly is what they're attempting to do. And here's our music cue. Telling us, how, telling us how to feel about our Big Daddy cutscene. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's I, I overwhelmingly associate this game with strings. Like, there's uh -huh. other stuff happening, but yeah. beyond that, it's... Um, whereas I associate first-person shooters with horns and... Yeah, like, the martial music. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, this is... And it's something that underwater music does is it's very flowy long stretched out meandering strings so it's it's fitting in a way and also like using like we talked about earlier strings for horror strings for ocean strings for let's put it together got door opening sound there it's great, Ooh, it's great I love it. <laughs> right all these environmental sounds that do basically nothing but cue us that of our proximity to objects um uh this lets us know things about, I mean, the, the idea that this Vita chamber makes a zapping noise right when you walk closer, right? It's mm -hmm. nonsensical, um, but that's fine, right? It's not a big deal, not a big deal. You die. Wow, they do no damage. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> <They, laughs> 
I, I didn't think it was going to be this easy. And I'm, I'm one shot in them with this like Ooh. standard wrench. <laughs> They're very squishy. Yeah, they're very squishy. Yeah, these these guys have been uh, they're they're too spliced up. That's fine. So it's all all the more to progress through. Yes, that's true. I guess it won't. The video game won't be attempting to stop me from <laughs> from proceeding. I don't even need to do the trick here. <laughs> Look at all that money. And the sound of hitting the splicers is also nonsensical in a way. That's something that movies have done for since the dawn of time is, you know, making the over exaggerated punching or hitting the sound. That, yeah. That, that is not exactly well, what I mean, happens in that kind of fight. Drink, so. drink a lot of whiskey there. But um, in, and the sound of the wrench striking something is mm. incredibly critical here. Sure. Um, because. It's actually really hard to tell how far this is going in front of me. Mm. If obviously, if it were just me, um, I would uh, uh, I would be able to tell. But uh, I, I really need the sound feedback to know that I'm successfully whacking the splicers. Can I actually, when, when you're done with the fight, sorry, let me just adjust the sound. Oh, are we hard to hear? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me let me kill these boyos. Boyos. I'll just stand here in the the ouch water. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll hop through here. Sure. And then so the store closes. Okay. Okay, okay. Pause for one second. Oh no. Extremes, <laughs> ambience, okay. Yeah. So there is um, constant ambience in the game itself. I think that might just be a little unavoidable, but I'm going to try to turn it up a little bit. Oh, it's already... Mm. <laughs> All right. There we go. Go ahead. As far as constant ambience, I, not quite. Really the most consistent sound effect I want to say is, like you were saying before, like your footsteps and you know, things like dripping sound like from the pipes and they sometimes occasionally fire in the background. Mm -hmm. Environmental but, sounds in other words. Yeah. Oh, God, I love this part. All right, then we get to level two. Level two. Goal and the map. You can also get a hint if you're stuck. This is another one of those things that you see future games that really borrow heavily from. Bioshock, try and have even more and even more um, diegetic versions of mm -hmm. these sort of video game, um, video gamey things like health meters and mm -hmm. goal indicators and HUDs and on-screen maps. Right. So Dead, Dead Space, Space. Uh, really takes this to an extreme, and uh, everything in that game is diegetic. Like your health meter is on your spine, and the map your character looks at it in his hand and you look over his shoulder, <laughs> right? Um, they're really trying and, and, and uh, you know, make it all in-game uh, to avoid, prefer, you know, possibly the artifice of it. But, of course, it just adds another layer of artifice. <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. 
I wonder how they implemented the sound in this game, if it was middleware or just vanilla engine. Uh, do you know much about that, Chris? As far uh, as it's the... middleware. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure this is Unreal, in which case um, it's... Um, I could be wrong, actually. We have to look it up. Um, but if it's Unreal, it's middleware, because um, Unreal does not have... Uh, um, Unreal does not have a very good sound, uh, sound thing. Um, I can do this thing. How about that? <laughs> oh, did you know that the sound of hacking is a clicky, clicky, clank, clank? Apparently. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, did we just freeze? Uh, no, I don't think so. Hold on. Uh, do Alt Tab and then go back again. There. There we go. Okay. Cool. Mark Chen. Swap pipes. Oh, yeah. How does this work? So you um, click over through the, the question marks to reveal pieces of pipes. Oh, yeah, okay. There you go. I've, uh, I've, I've, I've completely <laughs> forgotten how to, how to do this stupid thing. <laughs> it's like, oh, in your time, right? Yeah, until the water gets to the, to the edge. Yeah. There you go. Hack successful. Now you have a drone, bud. Right. Now we hear one of our other yep. <laughs> standard environmental sounds in this game, which is the sound of these vending machines, which really, really loudly announce their presence. Um, in, in multiple ways, not only in the uh, in their visual design, mm -hmm. and they're often placed with a with, uh, lit by all sides and they have a bright LED uh, little sign um, that's of course to help us you know figure out how to get it how to get the crap and usually it's that really vibrant blue and pink too mm -hmm. and it's been placed behind this brown and gray and really rusty settings like it still looks fine it's easy to spot Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Machine gun. All right, leave me alone, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can't believe they uh followed you pretty far. <laughs> yeah, so in answer to the middle of our question, we'd have, we'd have to look up which engine this was made and I don't actually know off the top of my head. Um but uh if it if it is unreal and a lot of the games in this era are made in unreal. Um, Unreal sound thing is not great, so people usually use another one called, I forget the name of it, it's like WMware or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and the, the way that, uh, you know, this game does have, have good sound design, very strong sound design, very purposeful and clear um, in the way it uh, gives you information, right? But uh, uh, um, usually, for the vast majority of video games, sound design is the last thing mm -hmm. in the pipeline, essentially, and it's, it's given uh, short shrift. And I assume, I would assume this game is similar. Wow, can these guys even do any damage? Uh, eventually. Oh, they're... I'm just gonna let him. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just to see. <laughs> play the game on easy, kids. If you really want to experience yeah, the story, yeah, <laughs> definitely play the game on easy. If you want to experience the story. <laughs> oh, thanks for tuning in. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I see. I'm uh, I'm lowering my mouse far enough to uh, get the Windows map. Okay. Uh, that's, I'm doing crap Sorry. like that. Oh, it's Mac. There you go. I I do like you know 
how their their bods go flopping <laughs> once they get murdered. We're at we, our bones are gone. We don't have any more. Let's go. Our next. Um, you're looking forward to talking about Doctor. Or was it the plastic surgeon? That's right. Yeah. He's coming up in the next Indeed. area. Yeah, he's coming up shortly. So the 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 infamous dentist uh, jump scare, which we'll get to shortly, is a good example of how all these parts of the sound design we've talked about, uh, NPC sounds, environmental sounds, object sounds, and player sounds all combine to create a specific affect. So uh, I'm going to hard save, I think. And uh, by, by affect, I mean sort of a feeling or an emotional um, uh, state that's, in, that's implied by uh, the, the structure of the game. Um, and it also shows, again, this game's commitment to attempting to construct its cutscenes right. diegetically. Yeah. Because they, through the structure of the environment, they are really trying to make you experience that jump scare. But they can't make you look, mm -hmm. so they do their best to make you look. Yes. Right. Um, to, to imply that you should be looking. That's true. It could do the same thing you did earlier. Just well, we could just look at the light in this <laughs> submarine, but that's not right. very interesting. Right. So the, it's implied by a couple of other ways. Uh, can I uh, zap this guy? Is that what you're supposed to do? Uh, no. No. He got zapped already. Right. So, again, right, you're talking about Bioshock moments, <laughs> right? The same thing happens again um, here, as we've seen before, right? You walk into your new area, you have a non diegetic music stinger, you get a key light on something that's supposed to remind you, and I think if we listen, we'll hear a diegetic sound of music playing. Now, I just hear that. That's why you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is to draw us into uh, to construct the the mechanical identity of this space, right? It allows us to experience it as as, as different and separate from everything else. Oh, look at this look at this boy. It's I was just struck by the careful placement of the water, of the not just you know the really carefully arranged posters and then the signature is in the exact left it corner it's all in like a very symmetric like using a photography rule of three kind of way yep yeah so it's, it's, it's extremely like, composed mm -hmm. right uh and and, th and that's why it's, it sticks out so much is mm -hmm. it's really um it's in, in, in film studies right we call that mise-en-scene mm -hmm. uh the arrangement of uh objects within a shot and they in this game, they use the fact that when you go through a door, they can sort of guarantee where you're going to be looking. Yes. Uh, to control the mise en scène. And is that something unique to shooters, or I guess this one in particular? No, no, no. no. Games yeah. commonly mm -hmm. uh, try and force looks, um, because you know one of the one of the issues is if you're if you're designing an environment, you you want that environment to have to be constructed in such a way as to move you through it in in, in a certain variety. Like, mm -hmm. so here's an example. Um, and you know, this is the the audio plays a role in this too. When you come in here, uh, you're you're you you have two two things, right? And you can go either way. When you do, you get to this symmetrical area. Um, there's a stupid <laughs> stupid guy shooting at you. Um, but that presence of the guy shooting at you, right, is supposed to guide you through the area. So if I were playing an extra mm -hmm. hard mode, I might walk through here, get shot, and run back. Right, right. Yeah. So you're, it's encouraging you to explore the space to, be, to get away. Yeah, to, to go a certain path, to see a certain thing in a certain order. Um, but it's also very common for video games, especially uh, role-playing games, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to just say, okay, okay. this is a cutscene, now we're going to make you look. Um, but the uh, 
the, the way that this game, again, the way that it approached the storytelling was like very influential, and a lot of a lot of uh, studios wanted to, wanted to sort of copy it. Um, it's still, I mean, I think it is still fairly contrived. There's no way to argue it's not contrived, <laughs> but uh, but it was still very very influential in its, in its attempts to really. Uh, uh, interface you with mm -hmm. the, the world of the game. And... Creating an immersive environment as yeah. well. I can't remember discussions of immersion, really, until Bioshock landed. I should use my gun. Oh. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is one of those, this is a, uh, again, uh, this is a classic Bioshock area, so it's worth, it's worth thinking about it again. Mm. Um, uh, it's, it's very big. Um, there's a bunch of places to go. Actually, the System Shock 2 is even better for this, but mm. uh, it's large. There's a lot of places to go. And notice, uh, notice something that they, that they do here, right? <laughs> they point you in the direction. They put the signs <laughs> on the walls, right? <laughs> so, uh... Uh, just like the way that hearing the sounds of the the gun shooting at us, uh, hearing their little tink tonk uh -huh. like when they target you, guides you through the space. So do all of the other elements of this design: uh, the signs on the walls, the arrows, the placement of the splicers. Mm. Um, it's all about causing you to move through the space in a specific way, uh, and that helps you not get lost mm. because otherwise, it's super easy to get lost. Um, and um, System Shock is way more confusing than this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of I. Um, I really loved this game when I first played it, and I, you know, I knew that System Shock was sort of the precursor. But um, just knowing that I would get turned around and lost and completely frustrated is sort of cut me away from it. So. Oh, I can hack these. I forgot about that. Not that we need to. <laughs> <laughs> not with our, no, with our invincible no, with our wrench of unbelievable power. <laughs> he sounds like he's doing a Michael Caine impression there. Maybe he is. Maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's what they told him. <laughs> he, can, you do, can you do Michael Caine? Grab some beer. Oh, chips. Some chips. That was nice. It's a, it's a really uh, balanced diet you have here in Rapture. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, one, one, of, one of the reasons why, right, you want to have it be just chips um, and not lots of different things mm -hmm. is that it lets you use one icon. It's very easy Fair for the player to continually recognize it. <laughs> not having them. And it's kind of actually irrelevant. You know, in, in many ways, it's irrelevant that it's lots of things. Mm -hmm. In some games, uh, you know, the Bethesda games are good examples of yeah. this. They put a trillion food items in, <laughs> right, everywhere. And they're mostly all the same, and they're mostly all useless. Um, the cabbage and the haunch and the... <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the, those the, things. They're just there to provide you with uh, a sense of space and a sense of an environment. Um, but the, this game is because it's so much more constrained than those games. It's more worried about constructing a, 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 a the environment that's purposely worked through, mm -hmm. um, rather than being like, "Oh, there's lots of junk around here," and that means it's kind of real. Yeah. Right. Which I mean, that was that worked for something like Fallout because it was meant to be like, yeah, well, literally, and, there's junk upon one off. So. And, and picking through the junk in that mm. game is a big part of the mechanics of that game, right? And a part of the storytelling too, because uh -huh. uh, Fallout's story is fairly uncompelling. Um, like the more, the most interesting parts of Fallout happen kind of before the game starts. I feel like, um, but you know, like. One thing that I always enjoyed in those games was going through the vaults, mm, definitely. where each of them have their own little uh, backstory. Okay. One that's mostly you, you get a couple sentences here and there, and mostly you're just thinking, "Oh, okay, uh, let me figure out what happened while I, while I explore through and look at where everybody is and what they're doing and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff." Um, this game's less again. It's 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 it wants you to go. Um, it's more specifically path than that. Mm -hmm. So it wants to give you the information in a lot more of an upfront way, which is why it relies so heavily on these radios. Yes. Um, being like, 
Do this, do that, do this, do that. <laughs> go here, go there. One thing that uh, I always miss from the old, these old first person shooters is that they don't have the like zoom in aim function. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really feel like I missed that. All right, let's see if we can get the fire plasma, I guess. Grab some coffee from the desk, drink all this coffee. Yeah, buddy. Coffee that lowers your uh, lowers your health. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say there, Bioshock? <laughs> I don't believe it. it. Makes you feel perky. How could that not be healthy? <laughs> True story. Yeah, I remember. Oh no. There we go. <laughs> Clicking off screen again. It's all good. So there's another re way that the environmental um, or the object sounds sort of function as discrete indicators there. Just picked up armor piercing bullets, which make a different noise. Mm. Cool. Mm. Um, which again allow me to skip past paying attention. Uh, oh, I guess I should mention um, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> um, so this, the, one, of the, one of the important parts about that method of sound design is a, a technique called uh, sonification. Um, and sonification is when you take a a sound that doesn't really have a real world analog, mm -hmm. and you attempt to produce a sound that uh, represents it. Um, so it's sort of like an icon on your computer, uh, but a, a noise instead. So the the classic example of this is um, uh, the alarm. So a fire alarm, for example. That's not the noise a fire makes. Right. Um, it's, there's no uh, there's no attempt to, to do some sort of mimesis or, or mm -hmm. a faithful representation of reality. Uh, instead, uh, we're we're just saying, okay, this sound has enough social meaning and social cues that you can uh, figure out what we're what we're trying to go for here. Um. So this works. In exactly the same way, um, in 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 video games, in as far as uh, you know, the classic example, of course, is the sound of um, a coin being picked up in Mario. Um, yeah, bring, 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 right? The 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 leap of basically about an octave, um, uh, and uh, it's it's it's. Move. It's critical, right, to make those sounds um, uh, recognizable, understandable, and iconic uh, in such a sense where uh, a player can very easily associate uh, a noise with its result. Um, and that, that's why so many of these object sounds, uh, clearly they are, there's, there's sort of a hand-wavy uh, uh, relationship to reality, but that's not really the overall concern, because what matters is the uh, the effect of picking up the object within the game's um, diage within the game structure is signal signals really obviously to the player mm -hmm. uh, when you're when you're playing. Um, and I guess you can hear that a bit in the combat as well, like mm -hmm. that sound of the. Yep. Like that's. I and guess kind of a sound that a fire makes, but do we have a sound in real life of fire coming out of somebody's hand? No. no. <laughs> and, th th and this just helps us too when we're if we're walking around uh, and I switch to my gun. Mm. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so why is that there, right? It's not because when you pick up a wrench, it goes chunk. <laughs> right? it, it's, it's there. It's a sonification. Mm -hmm. And what is it sonifying? It's sonifying equipping a wrench. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's necessary because as a player of this VidCon, uh, I want to know what weapon I have equipped. Right. And this too. You see, see what I just did there? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I'm resting in my hand. And not only is that a visual cue, so yeah. I can see uh, the wrench move across my FOV, but there's an auditory cue as the gears on it clink against my palm. Um, and that also helps me constantly be aware of uh, the way the environment is working. Oh yeah, and that's right. Now, uh, now, I, can, okay. now I can use the jazzercise. <laughs> Equip plasmid jazzercise today! I got special ammo. Hey, buddy. Woo, 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 woo. I wanna burn ya. What do you think about that, bud? Oh, he's very upset. How about you die? He listened to you. Thanks! Gosh, you, you, you should fight crime. I should fight crime. <laughs> I keep on trying to uh, zoom in by <laughs> pressing the, 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 the other button. And changing to plasmids instead. I, I hey. think you can do that later with the, um, you also get a rocket launcher, but don't quote me on that. I'm sorry, this machine gun doesn't have a scope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, the role of the uh, sound of these things being picked up becomes more and more important as the game goes on, as you get more and more familiar mm -hmm. with uh, the game, and you don't want to look at stuff. You just uh, want to keep on. Yeah, you just want to keep on. Let's give this guy, let's give this guy the juice. Oh, I missed. Fug. That was a lamp. There we go. I do want to do a save before we get to the. Yeah, I'll save. There. I'll okay. save before we get to it. Great. It's coming up soon, but I don't think it's in this room. Mm. This is just an extra room over here. I okay. Think. I mean, I don't remember exactly, but. Will I ever be able to pick up this? Pick up that can of cat cat food. No, oh, it was round. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, pick up that can. <laughs> okay, here we go. That's another, yeah, that's, <gasps> I mean, that's another one of those, these, these classic, uh... Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Tell me about this. Hear that sound? Ah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Excuse me, let me give you guys the business. Ah, uh, business! Business! Oh no, oh no. Oof. I love, yeah, shooting. A, um, I love shooting man. A really interesting build there. From first lights off, then. <laughs> right. Exactly. We we hear the environmental sound of the uh, of the splicer's feet moving mm -hmm. moving above us, and this is this is basically this is basically a this is basically a tutorial, right? Sure. Um, because um, later on, when we have spider splicers, mm -hmm. one of the ways we'll we'll identify their location is by hearing them. Mm -hmm, with their... Moving above us, yeah. So they have metal hooks. They go chunk 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 chunk, 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 right? And that lets us, you know, as players, quickly and easily identify what uh, what we're up against. So... The elephants. Oh, I have to use this for some shit. <laughs> Yay, now you can take the trash can with you. Telekinesis is like the most powerful plasma in this game. Yeah, it's like um, the amount of mana that's used is the smallest compared to the others, so it just ends up being the best one. Yeah. I'll take this money. It's collected dollars. Seven. Yark. Yeah. 
Hack the safe. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't much care for that. <laughs> <laughs> see, I think I should be able to. Let's see. The other thing is, if you don't suck anything. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> I have to suck it. Suck it and then blow it. I, I think. Oh, there you go. There we go, okay. Nice. That's how that works. You have to suck and then blow, as they say in the, in, in the industry. As they say the boob. Ho, ho, ho. Tee hee. Tee hee, indeed. <laughs> a little, little, little some, some nice bants on this stream. We're all about nice bants. Yeah. It's a fact. You ugly. Oh, that's right. I can suck and blow their... They're grenades. They're grenades. But I think I'll just go where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of <laughs> sound happening all, you had all at once there. Yeah. So this, it's interesting, you, you enter the new area, but it's not like, pause, stop, and look around. It's just, no, just keep going. Right. <laughs> just, just go. <laughs> and you think that's because you are starting uh, in the middle of a firefight, or? Oh, uh, we've been here before. Okay. What? I'm supposed to blow something up here, right? Yes, but I think it hit the railing. There we go. <laughs> Take that, Gorbs. So we just got our stinger. Like something bad is going to happen down here. Yep. It's got a nice stinger. And how you're using literally your meat shield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically, uh, I think uh, I recall from the speedrun of this game that corpses are like a one hit kill. That's pretty great. <laughs> with, uh, with telekinesis. You can just grab your corpse buddy around and just give everyone the business. Man, you don't even have to speed run. That's right. Uh, now how, how, do, how do I use my Eve hypo? G B C no X B E G E T T T forget. Okay, well, who cares? <laughs> who cares? You cannot care anymore, Eve hypo. It's giving you these specific tapes at specific times. You're supposed to be going a closer, closer, closer to yep. Diamond. So indeed, and then the, the, the structure, again, this is another one of those cases where they're hoping, right, that you go the right way. Right. <laughs> right. And it, but they're also designed to be vague enough that it's pretty easy for you to figure out, right? Who's doing the lighting, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> he has a stage manager, <laughs> just somebody sitting in a, in a booth. Can you die there? No, I don't think so. I got any juice here? Got Get it, got it, buddy. got it. <laughs> Pow! 
Wow. Yeah. Now look at his gold. We'll get there soon enough. I guess here's all the jazz you, in case you were actually having trouble with this fight. <laughs> you didn't just literally stand directly in front of him and let him shoot you repeatedly. The game doesn't think that you're done. <laughs> so it's just... Right. So you know, here's one of the places where uh, the non jazzic music is, is functioning it is, is is serving its primary function, which is tell you you did something. Mm -hmm. You did something. Okay, here's some violence. How's <laughs> <laughs> some violence? You like those, right? Yeah, 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 okay. Now here's the thing, my dude. I don't remember where that dentist is. Uh, they, uh, you're in the right place. You just have to go down a... Yeah, I definitely am in the right place. Combat tonic. Yeah. Hot diggity dog. C -c -c Combat tonic. <laughs> you want to take your corpse buddy with you? Nah, I don't need him. So is that meant to tell you that, hey, a little sister's nearby? Or yeah, I, I just... think this is meant to uh, foreground to you that we're going to get that mechanical introduction shortly. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. He can hear her. I know, I know. Uh, yeah, don't, don't. Um, see, so well, they've, done, they've done something here, which is they shifted. You're supposed to be able to tell by his voice that they've shifted into the intercom. Okay. <laughs> rather than the radio. But, yes. I just like the idea. He has his little radio out and it's like, oh, ha, ha. Oh no. Let's see. L. No, no. She's oh, like yeah. a linebacker there. Yeah, you gotta love it. <laughs> this is just a classic video game thing. <sighs> gatherers gathering. Gatherers gathering. Gatherers gathering. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me jumping. You're doing great. You're doing really good. This is supposed to open, right? See, the sound when the little sister is rescued, I think, is probably the only other major Bioshock like memorable music. Yeah. It must be because you hear it, well, if you play in that way, <laughs> you hear it pretty often. 
or at least more consistently than you hear some of their other sound cues because it's like you're saying it's mostly brought into the forefront at the very very beginning <laughs> Oh, and also, in terms of how we remember musical mm-hmm. sounds, a lot of times we, re- we remember them by being able to uh, sing or to hum them. Mm-hmm. And uh, nothing in Bioshock is very easy to do either of those things with. Sure. <laughs> me, 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 me. Like, I hum that. I don't think anybody would say, oh, that's from Bioshock, is it? Well, let's see. Like, uh, how about a armored shell? Not like they're doing much damage to begin with, but... <laughs> yeah. And we'll take in rage. Why not? And we'll equip it instead of shock. Grr, arg. <laughs> sure, buddy. It, it's, it's very entertaining. Ew, what's that? Uh, that's what it looks like when you use it. Blop. <laughs> I did not use that one very much. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't use a whole lot of uh, plasmids my my times through. For the old the old wrenchy roo. The old wrenchy roo. Once you got that crossbow, like very right. late, it was just right. like, yep, I don't need really anything else. So. There you go. Ah wow. ha ha! Oh, I'm so entertained. Got him. Don't enrage solitary enemies. Well, now you tell me. Bull forward. So here we are back here again. So I'll see if I can find the. Uh, the Do we have a big daddy fight the, first? Yeah, I was about to say. Oh, you, you can come back, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll give the big guy the business. No, you can you can hear that fucker, right? Ooh, he's a loud boy. There's a big boy here. There's an audio tape. There's a phonograph somewhere. Yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, I hear, <laughs> you know, someone singing the song. No, I just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Pew>! <laughs> okay. So let's see. We'll look. A, let's look around. We'll use our reading skills and see if we can find a Doctor Simons. We want to go to someone's dentist shop. Okay. If I can't find that. I'll just go on. <laughs> I know it's optional. This usually gives you that really gives you Joe's home. Yeah, I don't remember where it is. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just sure. we'll just carry on. Okay. You can look it up really fast. Alright, All see if you can find it. Unless I put my phone somewhere weird, which is possible. Oh well. Nah, I don't have my phone on me. Congrats. Well, what good are you then, Jay-Z? I don't know. I don't know. You're dead to me. Did he just straight out punch you? Yeah, he was trying to hit me. <gasps> With his box? Like, just, it was just a man in his box. Uh, 
Yeah, you know, I gotta admit, this game still feels very responsive. <laughs> In a way that, like, it's not clunky or it's not. Yeah, it doesn't feel super clunky. Here we go. Here we go. Neptune's bounty. I read this. If your plasmids are boring, not losing. <laughs> like, oh yeah, the miserable boring boss. <laughs> Man, I, 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 mean, I need some more pep in my plasmids. The fighting mon mon mongoose tavern. That's right. There. Wow, that's pretty cool. Right. Oh, here we go. With here we go again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, this one stayed with me a long time. Bum, bum, bum. Da, da, da. So one thing you mentioned before the stream, when um, Fallout does this, a retro future, what, what was it oh, called? Oh, yes, <laughs> retro, retro techno futurism. Retro techno futurism. Retro techno futurism. <laughs> so retro techno futurism is when a media text uh, represents the future the way it was thought of in the past. Mm -hmm. So uh, for instance, um, in, in in this game, which is sort of it is set in the past, but as we today imagine that people in the 1950s might have mm -hmm. imagined a futuristic city. Right. So we've got crazy uh, technologies, but it uses all this design language uh, from um, uh, from an uh, from an older time. So there, you know, there's genes splicing and crazy things, and then. You know, when you get to new plasmid, you see you watch a Nickelodeon. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, Fallout uh, also is the other game that heavily uses this. Uh, so, a design ethos which is uh, based on uh, a reinterpretation of how the past saw the future. Um, and in Fallout, uh, like I mentioned before the stream, uh, it's kind of played for laughs. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, it looks kind of a little ridiculous and, and goofy. Um, in this one, um, the uh, the presence of sort of like happy images of ladies with um, Audrey Hepburn hair, you yeah. know, smoking a cigarette, uh, is, is less intended to be sort of a, a, a sort of sly, goofy nostalgia, and and more of a sort of reminder of uh, what broke. Mm -hmm. As an implicit comparison of the the splicers to the the past, um, and also just the design elements are very Metropolis, like the yeah. um, the silent film from which you know predates this the era that Bioshock was supposed to take place by many many years, but it still is just shorthand for this is the future with yeah. this like this very like stark like triangle sunburst coming out from a central point. All right, exactly. Yeah. Go for that big daddy. Oh, that, that, that boy's going right after me. Huh? <laughs> Look at this. Look at that boy. Oh, that's going to be a problem in a little bit. Where'd that little sister go? Uh... Oh, I don't know. Let's try 
Get that boy, get it. Bye. Bye. Alright. Yeah, easy mode is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're a medical expert, so it's even easier. Hello. One of my a little one. The moments in this game I always liked the most is uh, when you get to the section with Tenenbaum later. Uh huh. Um, and if you rescued them, all the little sisters are like, "Look, it's the nice man." And they're like, "Yeah, I'm a nice man." <laughs> I got that part, and then I accidentally ate one of their pet bars. <laughs> and she went, "That's mine." <laughs> I felt really bad. And you're like, "Yeah, whatever." Well, you know what? I need these potato chips more yeah, than you. Yeah, I need these potato chips more than you, sister. <laughs> so much noise, right? Yeah, when you get to these places. And you get to the door, both of your item shops. Yeah, both the item shops start <laughs> tinking away their little, their little tunes. It's funny, I want to say Bioshock Infinite took this to an even greater extreme. It just added more and more and more noise. Yeah, yeah. Infinite's very noisy. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a little less shouting in that game. Mm -hmm. um, like, the the other guys shout at you less. But, uh, man. Yeah. All, all these games, I think, in general, are, are, are very noisy. Oh, this is where you finally get all these things. Oh, let's get the wrench jockey. Yeah. Mm, let's see. Machine Buster. Extra nutrition. That sounds stupid. <laughs> but... You get you get more from the potato chips. More. That's true. I do like potato chips. Now with extra nutrition, all the chips become like terra chips, so they're like the vegetables. If you get more vitamins out of them. <laughs> potato. <laughs> I like being up close and personal. That's right. That's the way you gotta handle it with this here shotgun. I guess I should follow this where we're going. I was wondering, when do we get our next major change in sound? Because I feel like it stays pretty consistent. It does, it does yeah. not. Once, once this game... I mean, the way this game works, right, and the way that many games work mm -hmm. is that they spend their first amount of time setting up how the game is going to work mm -hmm. and then they stick with that right they and then right. they just what they do is like uh in this game is they uh they put it in different environments sure so it's like okay you've got a system you've got splicers who shout you've got noisy uh Noisy items and all this stuff. Well, now do it in here. <laughs> now do it in here. Right, now do right. It in here. Um, so uh, that's sort of how it ends up working. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it stays consistent throughout, but it does mean that it's. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not bad, but it it means that uh, you know once you learn the basic elements of the game, you should expect them to stay constant. Mm -hmm. um, Almost all games games do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why they all have tutorial levels. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and then once you're done with the tutorial, then okay, you should figure it out or something. <laughs> yeah. I will always have respect for people who 
have to make subtitles for yelling and for <laughs> monsters growling. Okay. Well, what? Good enough. B b bye. <laughs> I guess. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this whole aspect the of the game. You're supposed to take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> because they couldn't combine enough weird elements. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, could, they couldn't uh, st stick enough things in there, so they stuck the Pokemon Snap. Yeah. So you know the way the the way that. One of the ways that this game varies the the pace, right, is it adds new weapons. Mm -hmm. But you know, once once the structure is established, it sticks with the formula. Yeah. I mean, that's why I was highlighting these establishing shots. Mm -hmm. Every single area has it. Yep. Right. It's uh, you know, it's designed to help us, you know, keep them separate, help us understand their their different mechanical identities. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it, it, the repetition is pretty obvious. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so I have to take the camera, huh? I just spotted where my phone was. If you want to go back, try to find the dentist. I can look it up. Uh, let's not worry about it. Okay. Might be too much of a pain. I think I may have also missed the script by killing Stein and oh, okay, okay. before, I, you know, I uh, I did it. It's all good. Yeah, I, I was thinking, oh, I should practice finding him, but uh, it's okay. I forgot. Down, don't, don't leave me alone, buddy. Well, I just want some fish. This is where I get the fish in the fish <laughs> place. Just, just want some fish. That's why I just wanted to have some fish. That's understandable. I mean, you know, we spliced our genes with all kinds of plasmids. Now we, we want to eat. Now you want to eat fish. Now I want my sea bass. That's right. Makes sense to me. So, oh, another big daddy. Oh, did I get? You got hypnotized, big daddy. I, said, I think I got hypnotized, big daddy. Woof. You're my buddy now. Hey, bruh. My buddy and me. <laughs> <laughs> I want a super cut of Big Daddy following you around done to that game. I think probably the best part of having him follow you around is having the entire screen shaking at his huge <laughs> footsteps. <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh, you know, just me and this guy. Now, if every time he steps, it shakes, how does he not fall through, like... Yeah, like a the end of the bell day. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> that was a sequence. That was that was hard. Oh, let's see. Oh. Evidence. <laughs> Evidence. Thanks, Big Daddy. That's actually pretty useful. I've never actually used it as <laughs> Big Daddy before. <laughs> he follows you for a long time. So, like right now, after a while. I assume he eventually gets bored. <laughs> I'm done. He's like, okay, time to go home. Uh, I think I'll just have to play with my little sister. Yeah. Oh, I get all these smugglers crates. Big Daddy, what are you doing? Take care of this boy. I'm doing my best. 
Oh, well, so it looks like he's done. He's decided, he decided to call it quit. It's time for a nap. A big daddy nap. Oh, he's gonna clonk clonk on the, the hidey hole. What have I told you about drinking wine when you're in the middle of a fight with a turret? Yeah, I know. Apparently you're not <laughs> supposed to do that. <laughs> not super... Oh, uh, there we go. Well, I missed that, uh, okay. that, that spot to go through. Chunk. Chunk. How nice. Oh, the, nice. What's funny is uh, the noises of these machines actually are find to be extremely annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's like thematically, I like that it's annoying because it sort of contributes to this theme of like all the people were totally infantilized since they were brought down to rapture. Like, no, we'll take care of everything. Don't worry about it. Like, we're all in this together. This, like, kind of really. Oh, you got him. Oh, you want a better grade? You got a C for that one. Well, look, I mean, come on. And a penalty. Score too low. Oh, I forgot the camera actually has a uh, ammo. Oh yeah. They never foresaw digital cameras. <laughs> but they upload apparently. <laughs> How'd you die? All right. Let's take some photos. Do, 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 do. That's another nice sound. Yeah. That's the sound when you can't pick up things. Yeah, you've heard. They had, they you, had to you, invent it. Yeah, of course they had to invent it. It's super necessary. Absolutely, I just love that. Usually, that sound is like a <laughs> or something, or right. like a just a kind of like sort of like we're sorry, but that's just sounded like like I thought you were like tapping on something. I couldn't tell what it was at first. Take the man's pictures. The man's pictures. Man. Don't you hate it when you try to get a camera down from the wall that you mounted and it just explodes? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, that was a good one. You got a nice close one? No, oh, it was a C. That was so not a C. Get scrounger? Oh man, I like that idea. Oh, that that gives me another juice. Still more. Wow. You got you got you got a pen you keep getting penalties. You already took it. Yeah, but who cares though? <laughs> but Draki, who cares? But Peachy's penalties are very severe. <laughs> who is shooting? I think it's a turret. Oh no, it's a, it's a dude. It's a grandma? I think it's a fisherman. Ooh. He's in like a fisherman's coat. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, bud. <laughs> I didn't mean to give you the business there, but... Uh, you had to like, make sure it was really, really done. Looks like the business was, was applied anyway. The business was inevitable. Do, 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 do. 
I think there's a spider slicer down here. Oh, you can mine an area. <laughs> hey, that shot. shot was an A. Hey, that's going to two. Come on. That was, yeah, that was a C. C. Oh, no. But her legs were so centered. <laughs> there we go. How about this, bud? Well. You know what I never really noticed until now was the um, the insults of the splicers, the things that they shout at you are really clipped. Like usually when there's a bark, like just some kind of voice cue, there'll be a pause and there'll be a break between them. Right. But when that spider splicer was shouting at you just now, it was like, I'm just going to hurl all the lines I've been programmed with all at once. Yes. Keep going, yes. keep going. <laughs> Yeah, they really they really do them all at the same time, and that was almost certainly pseudo scripted. Sure. Um, since they wanted you to hear all the splicers' insults to know that this is a special one. Uh huh. And you can take the, the the pictures of it. But yeah, I mean they they talk incessantly, and they'll be like, uh, "I'm gonna get you," and then they'll start singing a song, <laughs> and then they'll then, start talking to their friends, and start groaning, and it's just. And it's just like, wow, good God, guys. <laughs> just, just keep it real. I mean, not like I'm expecting people who have lost, you know, their mental faculties to sound like... They like, I'm not sure what realistic would sound like for that kind of thing. Yeah, but. exactly. That realistic doesn't really exist. <laughs> like, in my experience of being surrounded by people who have taken too many... Uh, gene splicing Yes, drugs. <laughs> you know, like, uh, clearly, this is just not what it really sounds like. It's so unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it, it's it's not necessarily productive to interrogate uh, interrogate games for realism. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, first of all, they really are. Second of all, we don't actually really want them to be. Exactly. Um, we prefer our games to be designed in such a way that they are fun to play rather than realistic and sometimes mm -hmm. that involves aspects and elements of realism but it's always mm -hmm. it's always a moving target right i mean i guess for the splicers like it sounds realistic and that this person is not sane right but not like exactly. oh i have a frame of reference for this we have, like, yeah. yeah we have no frame of reference yeah. and all it needs to do is is suggest to us mm -hmm. uh you know basically cult through our cultural knowledge of what we mm -hmm. expect insanity to sound like sure 